Right, welcome to this Tyranids units rated video. So I'm gonna be showing you my, what I think are the top unit choices uh, from the Tyranids Codex. I'm gonna go through some honorable mentions as well. So I'm gonna do the top five and then mention a few others that almost made it into the list uh, as well. Let us know in the comment section if you agree or disagree, if you've got your own order of what you think are the best units. Uh, especially wanna hear from experienced Tyranid players. Perhaps there's ones that I've missed who haven't rated highly enough. Perhaps there's units that I've rated too highly and they should be brought down and other units taken their place. For discount 40k, do check out the link below for gaming figures. Uh, they'll do your Tyranids uh, codex and models for you at a discounted rate. If your order's large enough, you can get deeper discounts. You can tap into free postage in the UK uh, as well. So gamingfigures.com link for them uh, below. So I'm going to use the data cards. I don't need to go through the codex for this one. I will just use the data cards uh, to pick these out. Plenty of honourable mentions. That's unit combinations uh, that are that are good, uh, but haven't made it into my top five. Uh, so briefly, I'll call those out. I, I think I'm just gonna, it's going to be immediately controversial why perhaps some of these didn't make it into the top five. But Gene Steelers uh, with a Broodlord. The Broodlord will give them devastating wounds, which is like essential. Uh, he can give hypno hypnotic gaze as well, minus one to hit roll for the unit, and then Gene Steelers. Uh, nice and quick infantry here, 8 inch move, the toughest 4 is 2 wounds each, 5 up save, 5 plus invulnerable save. Um, they uh, have their claws which is 4 attacks each, this is the great thing about them, they hit on 2s. So they're very very reliable in close combat, strength 4, uh, but uh, you can kind of, not bypass, but it's kind of irrelevant for devastating wounds, just hunting for those 6s, tons and tons of attacks, hitting very reliably. Uh, and then trying to get those devastating wounds. Uh, they get scout eights, so they can move swiftly. You've got an eight inch scout plus an eight inch move, you can move very, very quickly across the board. Uh, and then Vanguard Preds, each time model on this unit makes an attack, reroll hit rolls of one. So now you're on twos to hit rerolling your ones. It's so exceptionally reliable in close combat. Uh, and if the target's at range of an objective, mark your rerolling wound rolls as well. So very, very reliable with your hit rolls. Uh, they will shred light infantry, they will shred medium infantry. And then with the Broodlord, which he gets his own attacks here, he's got built-in Devastating Wounds, 5 attacks hitting on 2, Strength 6, minus 2, 2 damage, he strikes really well. Um, and Devastating Wounds, and Twin Linked is rerolling his Wound Rolls. He'll get his reroll 1's buff, because he's in with the unit of the regular Gene Stealers. Um, so all in all, pretty good. So Gene Stealers, scary enough, maybe they should have made it into the top 5, uh, but they get an honorable mention. Uh, the Tyrannifex as well which is another good unit, a very tough beast, 16 wounds, 2 up save, toughness 12, which is crazy. Um, and then obviously going for the Rupture Cannon, which has changed, Games Workshop have updated it to make it even better than what it was, and it was good enough. Uh, but it's now improved. The main reason you're taking it is it's very so strong, solid. At gun platform and then the gun itself the rupture cannon is fantastic uh, so it's across here so you're looking at range 48 you have the board covered brilliant um, two shots coming from this thing threes to hit but uh, yeah here it is it does have heavy so if you sit still uh, you get plus one to hit rolls great you could hit on twos uh, strength 18 which is fantastic at uh, 8 minus 4 you're a strong AP minus is so essential for 10th edition. Uh, so so often units are getting the benefit of cover and so on. Armor of Contempt so a real pain as well. Um, so AP minus 4 is nice and strong. And then the damage was 2d6. It's now d6 plus 6. So guaranteed at least 7 wounds. So a real killer of vehicles as it should be. Uh, and then the icing on the cake is Resilient, resilient Organism. Uh, once per battle you can change the damage roll coming through against you to 0. So some powerful laser cannon hit comes through just turn it to zero so these things are very very tough they'll happily sit on your back line add very hard to kill absorb a lot of damage and then the return firepower real anti-tank anti-monster ability with them just i haven't put them in the top five because of the limitation it's sitting there shooting at vehicles and that's about pretty much all it can do yeah useless in close combat and so just not quite diverse enough to make it into my top uh, five choices. So Anthropes are really good. Again, for firepower, not as 
along with a range but warp blast uh, on these lethal hits psychic you can focus with it just the one shot but you can have uh, a squad of them a neurothrope and then two to five zone tropes uh, hitting on threes strength 12 really good even most three which is good and d6 plus plus one which is great so that's all good but again just not quite good enough to make it into top five but worth mentioning them for some decent and tank firepower uh, another honorable mention is lictors massive fan of these one of my favorite sculpts from games workshop you've got yourself a, a very tactically useful unit six wounds four up save uh, toughness six eight inch move in close combat they're built in precision so you really can use them to root out characters they're a bane to lower wound space marine characters like lieutenants chaplains so a real good chance of, of, of getting them six attacks then two strength seven minus two two damage you've got fights first built in which makes them an absolute pain they're usually fighting first throughout close combat uh, they infiltrate they're lone operative they're stealth they're just full of stuff if they kill characters you get a cp and you can use rapid ingress of them for zero cp as well and i love to run them with death leaper as well just an even better just like a super upgraded death uh lictor so massive fan of those beautiful sculpts tactically very very useful units especially when they're hunting packs like two or three of them working together you can shred a squad and root out characters very effectively with those i've i've played a game recently and two lictors terrorized a space marine squad uh, killed their character and then went on to shred most of the squad and they're cheap I mean, they're 55 points they're very very cheap and they're like this they're huge on the battlefield just brilliant unit and i'll mention this is borderline but the extra crimes firepower if you need a bit of artillery firepower it's damaged three so good against heavy infantry heavy intercessors aggressors and so on uh, it's bioplasmic cannon, range 36, good ball coverage. It is blast and heavy, so really good against that heavy infantry. D6 plus 3 attacks. You know, with blast, it's pretty good. 3 to hit, strength 8, minus 3, 3 damage. All good, tough enough model on top of that as well. So it's okay, I've mentioned that one. And then the Neurolictor, which I've heard Tyranny players saying, if you can master using these, it can be very effective for the disruption factor of those. You're just getting a Lictor. That fights okay at six attacks, two to hit, strength six minus two, but just the one damage, it's still precision. Uh, but using it for these abilities here, um, when you destroy an enemy character, you gain a CP. I can imagine that's not going to happen too much. But then you've got neural disruption. You command phase select one enemy unit within 12. The unit has to take a battle shock test and a psychological saboteur or ability. So you can use these to disrupt the opponent on objectives, just get them to fail uh, battle shock tests. And then whilst the enemy units have in 12 inches model, if that battle shock, uh, if the unit is battle shocked, then each time unit that uh, each time model that unit makes attacks attract one from the hit roll, this is kind of disruption thing going on. And each time friendly Tyrion's models make an attack that targets that unit, add one to the wound roll as well. So it's okay, I think it's just not quite potent enough to make it into my top five. So I'm sure many of you will say, well, those should have been in, some of those should have been in the top five, but I'm gonna go through these. <laughs> That's the controversial ones here, but. This is a hidden gem. I'm convinced of it. These are really good. They're in at number five. I haven't put them at the top, uh, but I think there's so much potential of these. And if you can deliver this unit well on the battlefield, that's the trick, uh, then they are fantastic. And that is Tyranny Warriors with melee bioweapons. So hear me out on this one. Tyranny Warrior is okay stat-wise. It's not that strong. It is OC of two, which is great. They're three wounds each, four up save. There's no invine the toughness five six inch moves. They are vulnerable in that regard. As, but in close combat, you've got tremendous shredding power with these. Let's say you take a unit of six. Tyranny warrior, uh, tyranny warrior claws and tans. Now, six attacks need threes, so that's thirty six attacks coming from a unit. Threes to hit, strength five. The AP minus is nice. AP minus two, which is great, and damage one. What's great about these is they have built-in twin links. So if you can get those hits, you're then re-rolling your wounds. It's going to be helpful against the tougher targets, helpful for shredding anything uh, with them. So that's all okay. You then get adaptive instincts. I usually go for the re-roll hit rolls of one. So now threes to hit re-rolling ones is very, very good. Very reliable. Uh, and then you've got, you can re-roll seven throws of one if you elect to go for that one as well. I rarely do. Um, 
so that's okay. Then to really give them a boost, you can bury a winged Tyranny Prime in with them, which is cheap enough. And I think they're cheap. I think they're 150 points for six, I believe. Uh, the winged Prime is about 60 odd points. You've now got a model buried in there that's got six wings, four up save, 12 inch move. Now he is allowed to go with warriors with melee bioweapons and he can hop around. So you've got six inch move to warriors, quite, they are slow enough, that's average. But he can jump and leap to the edge of the unit just to give you that extra boost. So you're actually going to get a bit more of a stretch of your movement with the prime. You could bury it in amongst them as well is the six attacks, two stitch strength, six minus one and two damage. Plenty of attacks come through. And the real, the real reason you take him is alpha warrior. When he's leading the unit, you get sustained hits of ones. Now all of a sudden, sixes to hit. You've got 36 attacks coming through, rerolling ones. You're going to get a load of sixes and they turn into extra hits. So you're getting real good value out of the prime. Plus his own attacks come through. Uh, he's leading the unit. His hits will turn into his sixes will turn into bonus hits as well. So you've now got a unit that's quite soft, quite slow, but the shredding power on them is insane. And that's without any help from stratagems, detachments, extra things that can give them some bonuses. But then the key is delivery of them. How do you deliver deliver them onto the battlefield? Uh, if I found when you walk around the table trying to walk towards the opponent, the opponent sees them, ambushes them, shoots them, reduces them down in strength. Uh, but a trick to using them is, I hope to do tactics videos for my favourite tier and unit choices, and I hope to include these just, and roll some dice just to illustrate how they work. But rapid ingress is their friend, uh, where you bring them on in the opponent end of the opponent's movement phase, position them ready to move, somewhere sheltered ideally, and then on your turn move out your six inches, jumping 12 with the prime, and then you've got a nice close charge range and they can go in. And because you've brought them on from reserve, and if you put them in a protected area, you can hopefully deliver them at full strength into the opponent. But you have to see it to believe it. Their shredding power is phenomenal. And so I rate the Tyranny Warriors and I put them in at number five. Check out the tactics video. It would hopefully illustrate that uh, for you much better. So that's the Prime. Next is uh, it's Old One Eye for the Carnifexes. So he can join a Carnifex brood. So you can bury him. Is he a character? Yeah, so you can bury him in amongst the Carnifex bodyguard. That's a real strong start. You then got eight inch moves, you're gonna keep up with them, toughness nine, add two up save. I believe if he's with Carnifexes and they're getting their surge, he'll then move up with them, so that'll benefit his speed moving across the table. There's nine wounds, two up save, OC of three, add punches like crazy in close combat. So that I his claws and talents, if you strike with them, six attacks and in threes, strength 14, which is amazing, eight minus three, which is great, and d6 plus one damage. So cranking out some real good close combat ability. You can sweep 12 attacks, but it's very poor. Uh, he's got a built-in feel no pain of five plus, again, which is fantastic. Synapse, his alpha leader whilst his model's leading the unit, each time modern the unit makes attack, you can reroll the hit roll. <laughs> reroll the hit roll for your whole unit. And that'll be for himself as well. So now he's three to hit rerollable. Um, and it's for the hit roll. So his friend, his Carnifex friends are gonna be rerolling their hit rolls for shooting and close combat. Fantastic. And then Unstoppable Monster at the start of each player's command phase, this model regains D3 lost wounds. And you've got uh, regen as well. So really good, old one eye, fantastic. And you can sculpt your own or build your own. It's um, inside the Carnifex uh, kit is this this uh, half skull exposed Tyranifex or Carnifex head. So you can make your own version of one eye, no problem. Rate him, he's powerful, that's at number four. He's really good. Next, now this depends on how you use this one. Number three, I've put the Norn Emissary. It's a new model for my list, and I've only just started using it, but the potential is certainly there. Uh, there is the Assimilator version, but the downside for that, it has no invulnerable save at all. This one does carry a four plus invulnerable save. So the role for this, old one eye, is just to surge in and just to smash stuff up. The Norn Emissary, Despite his potency in close combat, is a bit opposite. This is designed to lay an egg and sit on an objective and to do it really well. Uh, 10 inch move, the emissary toughness 11, two up save, four plus invulnerable save. So you've got a tough unit here, 16 wounds. So hopefully you've got something nice and immovable on the battlefield. OC of five, off to a really good start with that. It can shoot at range 18 with three options. The psychic tendril, which 
uh, it gives you the psychic tendril and then you can go for neuroparasite which is precision psychic two shots range 18 two stit strength eight strength eight minus two and d3 damage you can go after characters uh, you've got blast neuro blast range 18 blast 2d6 attacks two stit strength six minus two one damage good against hordes or you've got neuro lance you've got a nice adaptable shooting weapon range 18 melter two two shots then two strength 12 minus three and d6 damage or d6 plus two so decent shooting in close combat six attacks need two at strength nine minus two and three damage and extra attacks of the monstrous rending claws of four attacks need two strength seven minus two and two damage so in fact you can use all these abilities not to go on the attack but to defend yourself as you sort an objective um and this is where it kicks in here so it's a synapse creature and then at singular purpose, you've got two options. You can go for, if you really want to go on the rampage, you can. Uh, at the start of the first battle round, you pick either of these two abilities. If you are going to go hunting, then you pick this one. Select an enemy unit. Could be like a land raider or something. To the end of the battle, each time this unit makes an attack that targets that unit, you can uh, re-roll the hit roll and the wound roll. That's fantastic. But I think the best way to use it is just to camp out on an objective. If the enemy comes too close, you can shoot and fight against them. As, as the enemy attacks you, you've got all those wounds, toughness, invuln save, regular save, really a lot going for you. Tuck in behind cover if you can, and then select one objective marker until the end of the battle. Whilst this model is in range of that objective marker, you get 5 plus 3 no pains, now he's even tougher, and an OC control of 15, which is brilliant. You've also got 4 plus 3 no pain against mortal wounds coming through, so another level of protection for him as well. 10th edition revolves around your ability to control, hold, score points and objectives, especially the no man's land objectives. And this thing is built to do that. And so I rate it highly uh, as you try and win games at 40k. If this thing goes out, secures a no man's land objective, keeps the enemy away and secures it from one turn to the next, that is very strong as you're trying to pick up points on the battlefield. So for that reason, I've put the non emissary at number three. Good, strong, uh, tactical choice. For your army plus the model's fantastic so next up is your standard hive tyrant if you want to make him really tough uh, then take tyrant guard i don't rate the unit um because they just they're pretty poor you know you've got i'll mention them here you've got four wounds you've got toughness eight three up save so they are going to absorb damage quite nicely for you uh, but their weapons are quite poor, I'm not really going to go through them. Uh, they don't really hit very well in close combat, uh, but they're there just to absorb damage. To, the main reason is to protect the Hive Tyrant. So if you're Hive Tyrant, you're getting a real good monster, 8 inch move, and again we've talked about the ability to hold on to objectives, to clear objectives, and to camp out on them. This model can do that as well. Uh, toughness 10, 2 up save, 4 up in vulnerable save. You're off to a nice solid start. 10 wounds, um, OC of 3, leadership 7. Again, you can bodyguard him with the tyrant guard before you get through to him uh, in for shooting you've got two options you can go for a heavy venom cannon um, which is all right don't usually cause much damage uh, it's blast range 36 d3 attacks two to hit strength nine minus two three damage or you've got the strangle form which is okay against your standard infantry blast range 36 d6 plus one two to hit strength seven minus one two damage you can cause some damage of that in close combat, your monstrous bone sword and lash whip is a good weapon. Um, six attacks need twos, very reliable. Strength nine, but you're twin linked, so you reroll on your wound rolls. Really good for chewing through stuff. And if you can get your wounds, minus two and straight three damage. So it's dangerous enough. Heavy infantry vehicles, uh, pretty good. If you don't go for the shooting option, you can go for more close combat. Extra attacks of monstrous seven tans, four attacks need two, strength seven minus two and two damage. So you've got a a tough character, you can bodyguard him pretty good, and you've got some pretty good close combat, a little bit of extra shooting. Now, his synapse, which is good. And then these abilities here, Will of the Hive Mind, this is the selling point on this one, once per turn, not per battle round, but every turn, your turn, the opponent's turn, your turn, the opponent's turn, throughout the battle. One for any turn unit within 12, it's not just him, but anyone within 12. Uh, it can be targeted with a stratagem for zero CP, even if another unit from army has already been targeted with that stratagem this phase. If you go through your detachments, you're going to find plenty of uh, stratagems that you could use. Uh, even the core stratagems, come on, rerolls. 
uh, that kind of thing. Constant zero CP stratagem use is so helpful for his own unit and for other units nearby. And then for surging up the board, an added bonus here for Onslaught, Psychic Aura. Also for any Tyranny's units within six inches of this model, ranged weapons get assault. It's very, very useful as you push up the board, maybe need to get up the board. Rolling advanced rolls where you gain the assault keywords. That's very useful as well. But the real the real selling point for him is this zero CP. It's just every turn, you know, the potential of getting that 10 times in the game. Yeah, Hive Tone would rate him. And then if you think carefully about your detachment choice, there's other bonuses you can start stack stacking on top of him as well. And I guess with the new rules, um, you're on plus one strength. So his monstrous slash rip and bone sword, for example, is at strength ten. Really good. Hmm. And strength, uh, like strength eight, with the monstrous silent hands. I'm tempted to go all out melee with him just to make him a real good melee monster. But a bit of firepower is useful enough. So that's him. That leaves number one. Perhaps some of you have guessed whether he should be at the top. I don't know. Um, I think he's really good. Again, for the abilities across here, it is the Swarm Lord. Such a good sculpt. Love the multiple swords. Just looks so, so good. 8 inch roof toughness 10. Same as your Hive Tyrant. So, just a variation of the Hive Tyrant, really. Uh, 2 up save, 4 up in vulnerable save. So, it's solid. 10 wounds. OC of 3. It's pretty much the same stat as the Hive Tyrant. So, despite it all looking melee, it does have shooting, which is great. And it's actually a pretty good weapon. Psychic and Torrent. So, you're auto hitting. Range 18. D6 plus 3 auto hits. So you've got strength 5, minus 1, 2 damage. Uh, the AP minus 1 is not that great, but bear in mind you're ignoring cover with Torrent, so just keep that in mind. But the real reason you're taking him, uh, well, there's two reasons. Yes, he's a monster in close combat, and then these buffs across here. Some really good ones. The overall benefit of your army. Uh, bone Sabers, crucially, twin link to your reroll and your wound rolls. Eight attacks now with him, and then bear in mind the whole time you're... Buffs and bonuses coming from your detachments. Um, Age attack, 16 twos, strength nine, really at strength 10 now, fantastic. Eight minus two, straight three damage. You can just chew through stuff. Heavy infantry, characters, monsters, vehicles. Uh, he will happily chew through whatever. Um, but then the what's put him at the top is these buffs. First up, Hive Commander, start of your command phase. If this model's on the battlefield, you get a CP. Brilliant. There's so many good stratagems out there for the Tyranids. A good supply of those uh, CPs coming through is very, very useful. Malign Presence is very good for disrupting the opponent. Once per battle, after your opponent uses a stratagem, if this model is your Warlord and is on the battlefield, you can use this ability. If it does, to the end of the battle, increase that stratagem's cost uh, by one CP. It's very disruptive. Things like command rerolls turn them into a two CP stratagem. It just really disrupts uh, the opponent's... Uh, options so that's really good so gaining a CP for yourself uh, increasing the CP cost on a stratagem for the opponent those two abilities are really really good um, and then domination of the hive mind uh, you've got a 9 inch range for synapse as well just as he emanates his synapse ability so that's why I've put the swarm lord at the top tough enough unit real chewing ability here in close combat Add, and then some for the overall theme of your army, for the overall benefit of your army, some great buffs going on with Hive Commander and Malign Presence. So I put the Swarm Lord in at number one. That is the list uh, here for the turn. So Swarm Lord at number one, Hive Tyrant at number two, uh, the Norn Emissary, I rate that if you use it correctly on the battlefield at number three. Uh, one Eye, if you bury him in amongst a good bodyguard of Carnifexes, he buffs them really good. Add, and then he's really good himself as well. Just a real good smashing Carnifex close combat monster with a bodyguard. Uh, brilliant option. Add, and then the wild card, I guess. Tyranny of Warriors, if placed correctly and your arrival is timed right, you've got yourself a unit that can shred the life out of uh, any infantry on the battlefield and cause trouble uh, for other units as well. So that's at number five with the Tyranid Warriors. Do let us know what your favorite units are. Perhaps you can modify my list, create your own. Uh, perhaps there's units I've left out, units I should never have put in the top five. Let us know in the comments section below. This could be like an area for sharing tactics with other Tyranid players. And then for discount 40K, perhaps you wanna get into collecting Tyranids, do check out gamingfigures.com. 
uh, it's linked for them below. If you're in the Middlesbrough area, I think they're based in Redcar, uh, which is, uh, Middlesbrough is not too far away. If you're in that area, uh, then you should see a link for their Facebook page. They have gaming tables there. You can go and visit them uh, and play some games uh, at the shop. And it looks to be a really good setup. So if you're in that area in England, then do check out Gaming Figures uh, for your local gaming store. That's the video. Keep a lookout for more Tyranny content on the channel. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.